We're all waiting. Hey everyone. Hello. We will give everyone a few minutos to join. Um, in that time frame, I'll just kind of explain. Um, you're watching a Ken's Creations live broadcast, and we welcome you. Uh, so we will be doing a lot of stuff. We have a lot of sales and stuff to talk about. We also are going to show the pens, the color tops. Anything we discuss is going to be down below in the description. So all the links, everything there, plus any videos you might have missed, uh, all that good jazz. And uh, all of my links that you can support me are down there. There's a link that says if you want to shop and support Ken's Creations, click here, and that will take you there. Uh, during the live broadcast, you guys will all see the comments, but during the replay, this th these comments go away. I don't know why. Um, so we will try to ask the question out loud. Feel free to ask questions at any time. Sean is monitoring the questions. Normally, we would show our faces on a weekly Wednesday wrap-up. Here's the, the deal, though. If we do that, um, it messes the camera up when we tilt it down and everything's backwards. So we're, we're joining this way live. So I'm going to dive right in. I know a lot of people are joining. And uh, we will wait. Sean just is trying to talk to me while also talking to you guys, which is always a mess. So Sorry. Yes. So uh, let's dive right in and people can get caught up. I did want to talk to everyone about, I did get some Cricut paper in. Um, and I told everyone once I got it and I would show it off. They sent me a few packs here. So this is the deluxe paper. This isn't any of the... Um, licensed but it's really good paper so first thing i noticed is the weight um it's a, a typical i would probably say this has got to be 85 pound cardstock and as we had said it's double sided which is really nice because the colors um are uh a perfect match the other thing i like is i was figuring this was going to be a, a a tear and pull so when you actually open it and tear and pull it it's actually loose inside of the packages which i really actually like because that way you're not ripping your paper on accident you're not getting those jagged edges uh this is not on sale right now but you can use the 15 percent off code uh so on the one side usually you have your solid colors and then the other side is the paper that matches. So this one here was called the P uh, Pastel Geometrics. And you can see all the different patterns and stuff are right there with the solid colors. This is the Natalie, I think it's Natalie Milan. And she is a watercolor artist. So she has, these, this is really pretty paper. Uh, you have all this watercolor that is just amazing. So yes. Uh, I am glad that this is not a rip where you rip it because yes, I'm the same way guys. I always rip it. It's very sad. On her back, it is solid color, but it's a little bit textured in a way. Yeah, it's textured. So we just saw a comment that says that they can't see us. You might want to refresh your screen. So seems like we always have one person that can't see us. This is cool. This is the steel plate set. This is a very masculine set, toolboxes, that kind of stuff. And it is a really fun set. I'll show it to you here. So you have this. Diamond, diamond decking. Yeah, it's really good stuff. Um, it's a gray, I would say a gray core cardstock. So not white, but also not the same colors, but that's okay because of what it is. This is a very good set for a masculine card or a project. This is one of the Anna Griffin sets they sent me. Well, it's the only one they sent me, uh, but it's probably my favorite one out of hers. Uh, so you have a lot of these. And once again, the color on the back should be a perfect match to the color on the front. Um, I like the fact that they do solid on one side and pattern on the other side so you're not trying to make a determination of your what you want to use as your uh, pattern because sometimes that's always a, a bummer is when you use one pattern on one side you're it could be a really good pattern on the other side and you're giving up on that so uh, this is the Mickey Mouse one vintage Mickey I love this set so we have Mickey Mouse and Minnie uh, with the kind of flower backgrounds. We have Mickey here with a nice stripe background. Mickey's head's on this diagonal. And what's cool on this one is it's the exact same on the backside, but it is just the Mickey's head instead silhouette. of his full. Yeah, it's like a silhouette. Yeah, good. Don't good. call that diamond? 
Yeah, diamond. Yeah. So this one's great. Love it. We have Mickey and Donald on this one. And then we actually have Donald, which I love. There is another set. It's a mini set. Uh, that's really cute. But I love this set. They also gave me some of their sparkle paper. Now, um, it is a little bit different than the typical glitter paper. Uh, the sparkle paper is, it, it has no glitter texture. And it's got a high gloss finish. So it is, the camera or the yeah, it's, the um, and it's a heavyweight cardstock. This is really nice. I thought that this was just going to be a replay of their, uh, their uh, glitter, but it's actually a really nice heavy cardstock. And you have a magenta, you have red, you have this deep blue. It is very shiny. You have green, once again, purple. So these links are down below. Go check them out. Uh, make sure to use my code KK15. We'll get you 15% off. Um, here is the other shimmer. Uh, once again, it's not, you can't feel the glitter on here. I'll show you up close here. You can see it, but it's not like their other glitter paper where you can feel glitter. It's definitely, um, I love that color. That's a nice burgundy color. You're, we see it darker than what you're seeing it as. So it is actually darker. Um, the first one was plasticky. Yes. Yes. This one is not plasticky. All right. So um, I wanted to show you another thing really quick. Uh, these I just recently got. When we were at CHA, uh, we saw Diane Reevely, and she debuted her um, pens here. And these are paint pens. And I was able to play around with them. I have a black paper so I can show you just how well these show up on black paper. This is the green. Once again, I've given you the link down below. You always pump it before using it. And when you first get it, when they're brand new, it takes a, a few minutes for it to get going because it's it's got to drain itself all the way down. Yeah, I don't have patience. So yesterday it was killing me trying to, oops, I did my K weird. That's okay. So this is the green and it is vibrant on this black paper. And it's, I absolutely love these pens. So we have green, you have this, uh, it's a deep purple. Well, I guess it's a- it's Lilac almost. I think, about, I think lilac. Yeah. That's what I call it. And it's hard to find pens that show up really uh, dynamic on black paper. Uh, so I was pretty ecstatic when I tried these out. I did see her at CHA using these, so I was pretty impressed with them, but they're very easy to use. They don't get clogged. At least mine haven't yet, which is always a good thing. Uh, Monique said that she had one and she says eventually you can work it and it'll, it'll come out. Yeah. Just like any of the other pens, as long as you work it and, um, it'll be interesting to see how long, oh, this one I should pump a little bit. It'll be interesting to see how long it lasts with this paint. So if you don't get a good, but I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. The, the colors are very bright, vibrant. There is also a black one. Um, that blue is really pretty. There's a black one that you can buy, uh, obviously just for white paper, but these are pretty amazing stuff. So I've given you the link down below. There's actually two different links. One is to Amazon with Prime, gets you all of them because the sets basically are, you get the five colors in, or six colors in one set. So you get the yellow, red, blue, orange, purple, or excuse me, green, purple, uh, orange. And then in the other set, you get the black and the white. But on Amazon, you can get both sets. So somebody was asking, oops, that's what they're called, delusions. They're a Ranger product. They match her Delusion paint. Um, anyone that's watched Melody's channel, she uses those a lot. Uh, for me, they're a great, I mean, they're really on black paper, just absolutely amazing and gorgeous. Uh, another thing we tried out was the Nouveau Mousse. So a Nouveau Mousse came out, gosh, a while ago, but I saw this also at the Creativation show. So we use this on a stencil, and I'm telling you what, this has shine to it. You can see it right there. I gave you the link down below to scrapbook.com that has all the colors. There is a ton of different colors. This was easy to use. I just grabbed a spatula, pushed it through the stencil, and it's completely dry, doesn't rub on your fingers or anything. So once it dries, you don't have that worry of, sometimes you, when you use like uh, crayons, like uh, the Tim Holtz crayons, 
no matter how long you dry, they, they still are a wax base. We have a thunderstorm going on, so if we lose electricity, that's so sad. So I just wanted to show you that I'm finally starting to use product that I buy. Sometimes Sean doesn't think I actually do that, but I <laughs> do. Another thing that we played around with last night, this was actually recommended on a live show by you peeps. Um, and these are the uh, Jane Davenport Color Institute. And these are a very vibrant marker. So I'm using this on just watercolor paper, but uh, I saw these originally on craft test dummies and she had even said that they are vibrant. Now I haven't squeezed any ink out of this. This is what is just still in the pen from last night of using these. Um, in fact, in the beginning, they're almost too vibrant, but they're very... Is there such a word? Too is there such a word? Uh, these are a pretty cool pen. Um, it's kind of like, I would say that uh, in a way they're kind of like, um, Wink Estella where you push on it and the normally glitter would come out. But in this case, now, according see, to Monique and stuff, this is not a, what is the word I'm thinking of? Um, watercolor pen. It's a dye. Yeah, it's a dye pen. They don't, um, you can, you can definitely water them down. Uh, if you put water, but it's not going to be where you can, for me, I would just use it with these, the vibrant colors. Um, but yeah, it, to your point, Sean, yeah, they're not a watercolor pen that you're going to, uh, do a lot with extra water. You could, it's just gonna, so that's just a couple of the colors. Very, very vibrant, very fun. They dry pretty quick. Um, they're right now, I found them on Amazon. That's the link I gave you down below. And I want to say they are $24.99. There's only one or maybe two left in stock. I also, I think that's the only one. Maybe I gave you another link too. I'm not sure. I don't remember quite, to be honest. But um, I'm pretty impressed with these. I hadn't used them. They've been sitting in here. I think Angela got me these. So thank you, Angela. I'm finally getting around to playing around with them, which is kind of fun. Last bit before we move on to what everyone's here for is you guys all, for those of you who have watched my show, all know that Tim Holtz released his Dest Distress Oxide inks, which I am obsessed with. Uh, these are very easy to use. They produce dynamic results. The first kit was Fired Brick. Um, it was also, I don't have this one, but Worn Lipstick, Spice Marmalade, Fossilized Amber, crass, Crackle, Cracked Pistachio, Broken China, Faded Jean, Peeled Paint, Ice Spruce, Vintage, and Walnut Stain. Um, these are on sale right now. Really good deal on Amazon. All of them for 50, I want to say $57. But he has just released his next set. So I'll show you those colors. It's going to be the Picked Raspberry, the Abandoned Coral, Candied Apple, Wild Honey, Twisted Citron, Lucky Clover, Peacock Feathers, which is one of my favorite colors, Salty Ocean. These are these names sometimes, I tell you, crack me up. Seedless Preserves, Antique Linen, Frayed Burlap, and black set. So what I love about this set is these are very bright colors. The first set has two bright colors, which was um, actually I think four bright colors, but this one has those really vibrant colors. So these are pre-order. They haven't been released yet, but um, down below you'll see the pre-order link. I think I sent you to Simon Says Stamps. Um, so I would order these because I'm telling you right now, when people waited on the first set, they ran out really, really quick. So that is the funness there. All right, so any questions on that before we move on to the main event? Sean, you're on question duty. I know, I'm watching. No questions? No questions. All right. I am gonna grab this and get this all out of my way. All of those links to everything are down below. If you guys have any questions, uh, I definitely encourage you to watch past videos because I use the um, Oxide inks in all of those videos. And I will be using these mermaid pens here soon once, once I get some more time. So let's talk about chameleon pens. 
So chameleon pens are not new by any means. Um, these pens came out, I want to say, two years ago. And maybe, yeah, about two years ago. And essentially the pens, when they were released, were released as a, uh, a pen that you can easily change your color tone. So for example, um, let's see, I have this, let's try this. So this is just a printout of a teardrop. And what you would do in, is the paper strong enough a Gemini dies? Which paper are you talking about? The Cricut? Yes, it is. So if I wanted to change my color here, I have a two different tips. So if I wanted to change it, I would open this up and then you have this alcohol at the end here and you simply put it on and you fuse it for anywhere between five and 35 to 45 seconds. The longer, yeah, and we're gonna show you a little trick here, but the longer you fuse this, the more it's going to diffuse your color. And once you're done, essentially, you're gonna go from a light, and it's slowly gonna turn to your darker color at the end. So, of course, the longer you leave it on, you're gonna get more of that fused color. Now, when these first came out, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, but I wasn't sold on them because for me, it was like, well, I'm just always going from one color. I'm gonna be going always from that, that light to the dark. And um, as much as I thought they were cool, I wasn't in love with them. That was until we went to CHA this year. And once I left CHA, I instantly came home and bought the 52 pen set. So this is the 52 pen set. It comes with all of your colors. Each one has the, the two nibs and you have your chamber here to, to get your different colors. Now these do have a learning curve. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. But if you go to down below in the description, I've given you a link to their instructions. And their instructions are actually pretty uh, pretty good in the fact that it tells you exactly how to do it. The one thing I'll, I'll note is this right here. This shows you your different colors. So the longer you leave it on, the more of that dynamic blend you're going to get. So obviously you have zero seconds there, five seconds, 10, 15, all the way to that 45 second or 35 seconds. So the longer you leave it on, of course, you're gonna get more of a blend. They also give you some great tips on um, blending as if the light's hitting a circle. So you're blending from this way and also adding colors. And so originally a lot of people said, well, how am I gonna add colors? And they kind of show you right here, you can have colors. Well, at CHA, they announced, I think it was actually before CHA, they started a Kickstarter and it was about their color tops. So essentially, now you have your base pens, but you have what they are calling color tops, which are these guys right here. And they had a Kickstarter, which I was part of. So I bought these as soon as I left uh, CHA. I told Sean, those are cool. I really like them, um, but I couldn't find them anywhere. They weren't released. They're not releasing until the end of July. July 31st, I think is when most people are getting them in the warehouse. And uh, so you have to wait for them or you can pre-order them. The only place I've seen that I could pre-order these at was at a location called Marker Pop. Um, so you can pre-order there, but everywhere else is basically just waiting until the 31st. They're releasing all the colors that you would have in the 52 set, which is this set right here. So all of these colors have a color top and they've broken them down into different sets. So if you were to buy the entire set like I did, you're gonna come in these sets. And at first I didn't get the sets until I started playing with them and then I realized that these sets go very well together and blend well together. The first one is pastel tones. So you're gonna get these colors in the pastel one. And the next one is your earth tones. I love this set. This is gonna be, of course, really good for your leaves and trees and stuff like that. They come in a package, but I did cut off the top here. Originally, when I got these, I was going to put them in the same order as my 52 pen set. 
but I quickly realized that these are broken down into colors because of blending techniques. So I'm going to leave them like this and we'll, we'll see. The next set I got was their blue tones. So this has all of your different blues, indigo, turquoise, all of that good jazz. Um, you also have the cool tones, which are these guys right here. How can I help you, Sean? It's going to help you get the next one right. Oh, you don't know what your, the colors are, do you? Mm -hmm. These are floral tones, so these are going to be your pinks, blues, and purples. Uh, this one's kind of boring, but it is very much needed. These are your gray tones, so these are going to be obviously for doing a lot of shading as well, adding those depth colors. Mm -hmm. This here is your neutral tones, so you have a lot of greens and reds in is here. That nature too. Nature. Oh, nature. I'm so sorry. Good job, Sean. Nature tones. To me, it looks like it's Chris Christmas tones, but what do I know? Um, you have your primary, so of course, red, yellow, green, and black. Blue. And blue. This one's a very uh, big one for people who do a lot of stamping with uh, flesh tones, so your face colors you have all the way from this brown all the way to the nude color. And last but not least, you have your warm tones. So a lot of reds, orange, and yellows. So the actual color top, essentially, if we were to grab red five, all they did is give you the top portion of the, basically, sorry, this, but instead of having just the um, colorless toner to, to do your, to bring that color down, they actually put the color in there. So what does this mean for us? Well, let's show you. Now you're able to mix, and I do mean any color, with your color. So let's, we have this one out, so we'll just start with this. Um, first, I'm just going to be using this here. This was just a teardrop design I uh, got off the internet. So we'll be using that. And I'll just use this set here, uh, which is our yellow two. So that's where we have here. So I'm going to start with this. And just like um, doing it the other way, you're going to go with this color top onto here in the shade you want. So whatever you're starting with is going to be your darkest color because that's going to be the color that you put on last. So we're going to start, since we have the yellow, I'm going to go ahead and um, do the tangerine next. And I've definitely played around with it. The fact that the longer you leave it on, the longer that color is going to be uh, prominent in your design. So five seconds, um, you're going to see your the tip of the, the marker change colors and you're going to freak out because you're like, wow, it's putting a lot of color on there. But you do want to leave it on there for a good amount of time because if you don't leave it on there long enough, you're not going to get a good transition. Um, your darker colors, of course, you're going to want to leave on a little bit less because it will overtake it. And I'll let you know right now, you will get a feel for it once you see this, you guys will say, oh, we don't really see the orange or we don't see the yellow. And it tells you, okay, we're gonna have to leave it on there a little longer. Um, but I would always recommend testing it before you do your actual coloring. So I left that on there for a pretty good amount of time. We're gonna start at the base here because this is where my dark color would be. So it should start with that burgundy. So there's that burgundy. And then we should go into the lighter red into the orange and we'll finish with yellow at the end now of course I am this is just on regular white cardstock so this is no blending paper it's not special paper I did stamp some images on uh, my favorite paper to color on which is the Bristol so there you go so using all those colors um, you can see we can stack those colors. Now instantly I can tell you right now, we can definitely see our yellow, we can see our burgundy, we lose a little bit of color there in the center. One thing I don't like right off the bat is if you do something like this and mess up, it is extremely hard to go back and fill that in because it's a custom color. Can you? Sure. We could pretty much say, okay, that's probably burgundy, so I can go over to my 52 pen, pen set, grab my burgundy color, and fill in there. But, see right there, it, it's not going to work. You could possibly maybe then go down to the red, vice versa. You could play around with it. But 
coloring is going to be essential. Always practice before you do it. Um, essentially, the idea is you can layer any colors on top of each other. Um, so let's try another color here. Um, we'll kind of stay in the same color zones and then we'll get a little, we'll get wild and crazy. So I'm going to grab my BL3, which is sky blue, um, which was a really pretty color. And let's go ahead and go up into purple. So we're going to start here. I'm going to grab, hmm, I think, I don't know what I want to do. Should I do that one, then that one, then purple? What do you think? I'll go lighter, darker, then purple. All right. Okay. So we're going to do this one. And we're going to let it fuse. And um, you even see it in there. I don't want to do it too long because um, you're supposed to put it at this angle here. So I'm going to leave this one for a little bit longer so I don't lose that color. Um, you can go all the way up to 35 seconds, uh, which seems like a long time. I'm letting you know right now, I've been taking the colors off too soon because for me, it seems like, oh my gosh, I'm leaving it on there for a long time and I kind of freak out. But... I will say the longer you leave it on, the longer that color will stay. I One thing I was impressed about at Creativation was the fact that I could literally layer any color. Um, and to me, that was very cool was, you know, now when I originally didn't like these, it was because, you know, it was basically just going from that light to the dark. You didn't have those colors, but now you can. So it's essentially like blending your colors, which is very fun. There will be a learning curve of just trying to get it on for the right amount of time. I cannot stress enough about practicing it before you color. That's very important. Um, so let's try this one and see if it turned out okay. So we're going from... So I did my light purple first, which is okay. We're going into that darker purple, which then should go into this blue, go into a teal, and then we should finish with a sky blue. So I probably left the teal on, as you can see, just too long, because I'm not even into my sky blue yet. I'm just now getting to that sky blue. So that's where it's getting used to that color. Um, that color all the way down. So I could probably, I definitely could have cut down that turquoise in there. Um, so let's go ahead and show you the difference on this paper, um, which is, this is Bristol paper, which, which is one of my favorites. Uh, and I tend to see that this blends really well with my uh, Zig uh, Real Brush Markers. So we'll see how they work with this. I'm going to be using, I tried to find a basic stamp that had circles. Um, so I grabbed this. It's a little inkers. I think they call it We Connect. The link is down below if you're interested in that. And we're going to do the primary colors. So the red. But I'm also going to throw in tan... Mm, Let's do orange. So I want to finish with a nice purple. So let's do grape. Mm, that's not true. That's more true purple, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. So since I want to finish with deep violet as my last color, I could either do one of, I can start with that and work my way up, or I can start with the red and work my way down, which is probably what I'm going to do. So we're going to start with red four, which is right here out of my 52 base set. And I'm going to work down. So we'll do this, which is orange. And I'm going to leave each one on for about 15 seconds. That's a long time. Okay, I'll do 10 seconds. You're freaking me out, Sean. You're <laughs> freaking me out. I'll probably leave yellow on a little bit longer because we're going from a darker color to kind of a lighter color. So we'll leave this one on for 15 seconds. Is that okay, Mr. Sean? Sure. But can you talk for 15 seconds while we wait? Why? Is dead time freak you out? Dead time on anything that's video is very freaky. Freaky? Freaky Friday? Freaky Friday. 
I did use um, a couple of different inks because I wanted to see if this smears the ink and stuff. So we will be testing that out um, to see if the ink. So we'll start with, I used Fun Stamper's Journey Black Licorice. So that will be the first one we use. And then we'll try a few others that I had readily available to me. So we're ending with that deep purple. But will be our start. But it will be our start, yes. So let's go ahead and do this circle here. So right now I can tell you I didn't leave everything on for, it's going pretty quick. And so it went straight through. Um, I probably could have left it on obviously a lot longer. There is a learning curve, I will say, to how you hold the pen, because if I was to now turn this over and start over, you're gonna see I have a little bit of purple in there still. So you can kind of see in there where I had a little bit of purple left over. So since we know this, let's go ahead and do that again. So we don't even see barely any orange, do we, Sean? See, you freaked me out. I should have done it for like 15 seconds. Maybe I should do a timer. Doesn't our phones have that? Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. Stopwatch. 15 seconds is a long time. So are you guys interested in these pens? What are your thoughts on these? I know the chameleon pens have been out for some time. Um, okay. That's not, is that 15 well, seconds? Maybe put it on before you started your timer. We haven't had any comments. Do you think people are not seeing, oh, yay. Yeah, yeah, you also see needs them. But the 22 or larger set comes with the blend, with the blender, but these are different. Yeah, so this, the 52 set um, comes with your base pens. And then these are the color tops. You do not want to hear me sing. Come on, Sean. Your public has demanded a performance. Are you going to let him down? <laughs> I don't know even how to sing. 15 seconds is a long time. It kind of makes me nervous. I got tired for the waiting, the mixing. So, um, I will say that, uh... The mixing could probably get annoying for some people. I was watching uh, the actually the Chameleon YouTube channel, and they show a whole thing being done. And Sean was bored after about five seconds. He was like, and they don't talk. They don't really tell you what they're doing. They just they put just it to music. It. And so he was like, this is horrible. This is horrible. And I'm like, well, it's because of the amount of time it does take to mix your colors. So Ter Terrence has the pens, but not the toppers. The toppers aren't out yet, so you could um, technically been part of the uh, Kickstarter campaign or Indigo. I think they're on both. And so you could have gotten them, but if you were not part of that campaign, you're not going to have gotten them until they actually officially come out. So we're going to start with that purple, and we just skipped right over the blue. I think I don't think I'm holding this isn't right. That, isn't that your pen tip that's kind of off? I can see it. Yeah, my pen tip is off. Yeah. That's the one you ran over with the... Uh, I ran over it, so this is probably not a good thing. I will say using the Bristol paper uh, is very, very nice. They do give uh, nib replacement, so let's show you that. In your 52 set, which is this set here, you get a colorless blender, so this way you can blend if you missed out. You also get detail ink, so this way you can do your detail. And then they give you this little box here, off to the end, and this has extra goodies in it. So let's open this box. In here, they give you uh, tweezers to change out your nibs, and you get all the extra nibs. So I, you get both your one end and you get another end, which is there. So I'll have to replace out that red pen because uh, the first time I used it, I pushed too hard on it and very sad. You did it over glitter. I did it over glitter, that's what I did. I did this over glitter um, and it, it ruined it. So let's do a funky combination, Sean. You pick out some colors. Um, it looks like it's definitely, um, I went over, this is the Fun Stamper's Journey Black Ink. So we did find there. This one is, I think, Brutus Monroe Detail Ink. So it did find there. 
Uh, let's try it. We have Tim Holtz Black Soot Ink. Let's do... Um, let's do this one. Let's go Tangerine first. I don't know how this is going to be. All right. We'll just kind of go this to a dark green. We'll use four of them. So it does take a little while. The only other thing I'm, I'm worried about on these is trying to reproduce it. Um, so if you like something and you want to get that same effect, uh, you better remember exactly how long you put that each one on for because that would be my big concern is trying to reproduce that same look over again. Uh, I, I would say for a alcohol marker, I do like them because I did try Copics. Copics were very expensive and Copics, um, to me, uh, I could never get them to blend well enough. So I do like them for that reason. How do you know when they're full? What do you mean? I don't know. Somebody just said that. Ooh, this one actually did pretty good. So we had olive at the end. Um, we had a little bit of a lighter green. We're going to go into tangerine, and then we're going to end with... Oh, no, we're ending with tangerine. This was, I think, called sunburst orange. Um, so that one did pretty good. I probably could have put the green on a little bit longer. If you do get a li little bit of lines, um, the reason I like the Bristol paper is it doesn't give you that line effect. So it, it blends really good. But if you wanted to blend it a little bit better, you do have your colorless blender here. And you're able to go in and take away color or blend it a little bit more all the way to the end. So they do give you that um, to play around with. I will say, though, it's... Something that, uh, someone that's never used alcohol markers, let's say you're you're brand new to alcohol markers. For me, they are very, very easy to pick up and and teach yourself. So we will have Sean do one, Sean. What, what do you want to do as your base color? Oh, let's see. Let's do a dark blue. Dark blue? Dark so blue let's do indigo. Okay. So, what color do you want to do after Indigo? Let's go... Do you want to do this, this set? Yeah, let's do that one. Let's okay. Go. Somebody said they started with these, but went back to Copic. Yes. So, Copics um, are very... Um, are you sure you want to do this one? I don't think you would want to. All right. Sorry. Here you go. I would do that, and then those blues. Um... Ooh, you know what? You might end with violet. Do you want to end with violet? Deep violet? Or no? No. Oh, just do what you want. Um, Copics, to me, uh, were very hard for me to do my shading and blending. So for someone that wants to blend, these are great alcohol markers. I don't... I would say they're not as... Which one should I do? For my favorite... Well, you're ending with indigo, so I would do this one, then that one, then that one. Um... Do I like them as much as Zig Real brush markers? No. I still like my Zig Real brush markers, but that's a water-based marker. So for me, they blend very well. They're very easy to pick up. Uh, they, they do blend, in my opinion, well. So you can see here, once they dry, you do get a nice blend. It's just going to take practice. And I can't suggest it enough while Sean's blending his colors. This here is huge. So they have the instruction booklet here and for anyone thinking about getting these brighten up your screen brighten up my screen there we go anyone that's looking at getting these i would look at the instruction booklet before you buy them it gives you a good idea of basically what it is how to refill your pen the exact way you're gonna have to color because to some, for some people this just might not be a good fit all right sean you do yours and then we will be done and we'll just chit chat for a while All right. Here we go. Here we go. After a couple more seconds with this deep violet here. It does take a long time. Just. I'm 
see me what I'm doing? So how long do you do each one? Uh, about 10, 15 seconds. So would you say as someone that doesn't craft, how easy are these to use? It's very easy to use. And easy to blend? Yeah. Yeah, there is a time, obviously. So really, I mean, it's going to be about, oh, you're going that way now? Huh. So they blend really good. I'm not going to say they don't blend. They're a pretty good blend. It's just, yeah. All right. Oh, oh. Now, I have to do you, this. When you flip, we're going to be upside down. So to make that help work, sorry for the. For sorry, those. we're gonna have to go wooshy washy with you, peeps. There we are. Ah! Sorry for my hand in the way. There we go. What's that? All right. So I have only used these for about a week. Okay. Did you not that. mention do this? They've got these nuts. Oh. They do, yeah. They come in a case, so you, you can, can only do when you gotta do them when the the lids are off. Yeah. That's the only way to actually do it. But you can store them all in these, and the cases they come, and they just slide in. So then that way you can store them. This way. Okay. So do you need these? Absolutely not. Um, they are they cool? I love them. For me, um, they're very easy to use. To me though, they, there's almost a little bit of a novelty to it. Um, so I think you're right. I think for backgrounds, they would be amazing to do a background. For me though, for coloring little spaces, I'm still going to use my real brush because yeah. to me, trying to figure out the coloring, everything that I've seen kind of done with these have been in big open spaces. I tried using these in my coloring books, like the nature one and those that really tight spaces. It's too hard to figure out the coloring and, and how long to leave each one on for. The other thing I would recommend is um, there was a really good person that was showing how to color these that she was using them in a way of going from like she had a whole bunch of leaves going from top to bottom and she wasn't doing shading within the leaves. She was doing it from top to bottom, which was great. So somebody wanted to know what would you use these for? So for me, uh, I'm definitely going to be using these for background. I think for a background, they'd be very great. I think these are also great for um, big open spaces. I'm going to flirt with my flesh tones. So even with Zig Real Brush markers, I struggle with getting skin tone just right. And so I am going to try their skin tone color, which is right here, and see how it works. But um, I, I, I don't see myself using them a lot for a tight space or for a tight... Uh, uh, thing. I, I'm sure for just the the blending of just the light to dark, you can do that for the small spaces if that's all you're looking for. But when you're going from a color to a color, maybe not so much. Yeah, I don't know. But it I, definitely, definitely is a great blending blending if you're doing that. Yes, it, it I I'm really glad good. I bought that. However, however, the 52 pen set is 175 dollars. And I think I added up the color tops and it's right around $100. So you're looking at right around $300 to get the entire set. I don't think it's worth $300. Mm -hmm. I don't. Um, I think their price point is good for people that truly like it. Um, I loved the fact that I could pick it up and use it right away. So that's a huge pro. Sean, at the show, the first time, he could easily blend any color. Mm -hmm. He could pick any color and blend them. So... For people, you can literally do red, green, blue, um, orange. Literally in that yeah that set. And I do think so the longer I use them, the more comfortable I get with them. When I first got my uh, Zig Real Brush markers, I was like, oh, they're cool, but I, I I was in love with them. I've had them for oh gosh, almost a year now, and now I love them. I could, that's one of my must-have tools is the Zig Real Brush Water Markers. I love them. Um, so the longer you have it, the more obviously comfortable you're going to get with it. Um, however, for the whole set, you're getting in Copic's price. $300, I think the Copic's large set is like right around 300 and some. 
Um, you can buy these individually. So someone just asked with Copic, you can buy them individually. So Chameleon Markers does sell every color individually. They are refillable. They do have where you can replace the nubs and everything in that. So um, that's big. I will say, and it could be just me, I was not a big Copics lover. I picked them up and tried playing with them. I bought a set. Once again, I'm sure it takes a long time to practice. I could not get the results that I liked with Copics. However, I do like... Um, I, I do like chameleon markers right off the bat. I liked them. They're I do understand they're kind of a novelty, but I like playing with them. I like coming up with any color combination. I would feel comfortable giving these to a kid and saying blend these colors and watching them do it. In fact, I don't know if you guys know this, Chameleon Pen started off as a kid marker company. Mm -hmm. So they were the ones that released all of those sets for kids that were like, hey, you could put t uh, pens um, tip to tip and then do all these cool colors and stuff. And then they realized there was an adult market for the coloring. So I heard they are releasing their kids line again, but I don't know how they're going to do it because they can't really release a $300 pen set for kids. <laughs> so I'm sure it's going to be basic colors, but that's how it started off. So if you go back way far back and look at chameleon kid sets, you'll see all of these, these pens for kids, yeah. which I didn't, didn't know. I didn't know either. So that'll be interesting to see how that works. But I definitely don't think they're, um, a must have for me. I liked them better than my spectrum noir markers. I wasn't wild on spectrum noir. That's probably because I didn't like the chisel tip. I'm not sure I like these as much as my Colorista markers. I really like the Colorista. So let me grab. So the Colorista are, they say they're non-refillable, but I think you can refill them. And this is what they look like. And just to show you, I won't turn the camera again because you guys will all get sick. But in my opinion, let's see. Orchid. Let's do hot pink. I think you can do that. So in my opinion, these blend pretty well. And the one thing I like about these is they don't have like a chisel tip and they don't have anything else. They just have the two tips. So they have a fatty, I call it a fatty and a skinny. And um, let's see how they look. And they're very easy to blend. Um, I was given a tip by someone at CHA how to blend them, except first I was just like uh, Spectrum or uh, Copics, I was struggling with them. And I was like, I don't get how to blend these. And then she gave me her tip and now I do. And it's been brilliant. So I picked kind of three weird colors so here. Uh, if Dan has more of these here, these are called the... These are called the Colorista. So essentially these are Spectrum, not Spectrum yeah. Noirs, but the... Friendlier price point of Spectrum like Noir. Two two fifty somewhere there she said. Yeah, they're um you can get them at Michaels I think for ten dollars a set plus you use coupons on it. So uh, they released it for specifically the coloring market, and I was impressed on. I'm not coloring into the lines, which you guys are gonna kill me, but I'll show you here really quickly. Oh, well, these blend too. So for a $10 marker pack, well, where is it? Right there. They blend pretty well. And that's purple and hot pink and blush. I probably didn't pick the best colors. <laughs> um, I don't have a full set because I just haven't. I have so many markers now. But to me... Yes, coloristas were developed for adult coloring. So for me, they work perfect and they blend perfectly. Are they artist quality? Absolutely no, because they were they were made for adult. What are we doing? Oh, I'm you're being, pushing. I'm being cut off. Oh, we can't have that. <laughs> I felt like. How I'm... dare they cut you off? No, you're funny. So, anyways, um, did you guys have any questions or want to see anything before we log off for the night? I will hopefully be using this more. I tend to fall into my comfort levels. So when I craft and do stuff, I tend to go for my Zigreal brush markers and my certain inks and do certain backgrounds. So this year I'm really pushing myself to try, get out of that comfort bubble and try new things. So that's what the the um, the Francis. chameleon were all about, mm -hmm. is trying to try new different things on. Yeah. Could they end up in a Ken's yard sale in the near future? Absolutely. They could, but... They could. Let's hope not. 
Yeah, because these I paid full retail price, I so that's a lot of money. Yeah, you did. Holy moly, guacamoles. That's okay. I love Zig real uh, Zig clean brush markers. However, however, I don't want you guys to think I'm dogging this. I, I right out of the gate, I love the chameleon markers. Yeah, I'm pen. very impressed. Oh, they're, great they're very easy to use. Anyone can pick them up. And I think the more I use them, the more I'll like them. The bad parts of it, like I said, is just getting your timing right and holding the pen just right. You'll notice here on this one, that's probably because of that nub. Just, I didn't hold the pillow right and my nub was broken and not good markers. That was not a good, good one. So, I don't know what the markers mean. That comment just markers, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, oh well. We'll continue. Do you know the weird thing is, is they call these chameleon pens. Hmm? They call them chameleon pens, not markers. I thought that was interesting. Pens, not markers. Yeah. So, I thought that was kind of weird. What are your thoughts on Prisma color markers? Prism, uh, Prisma. Prisma. PRIS. I don't think I've used those. Do you even have any? I don't think you even have any. Mm -mm. I have Spectrum Noir. I got the Spectrum Aqua. I got Colorista. Colorista. I'm not wild about Spectrum Noir regular just because um, I didn't like the chisel in. They were hard to blend for me. Um, the Aquas are kind of their water based markers. I just, I, I'm just not in love with them. I think once I started, I got comfortable with, um, I just didn't, I don't know. You have both pens and pencils and they are great. I have the Prisma pencils and they're, oh no, no I don't. No I don't. I have the Derwent color something. I don't remember. I have too much product. Too much product. And running out of room. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the quick look. We will be actually back tomorrow. Oh, the Intense Pistols. Thank you, Debbie. That's what I have, too. Yeah. Um, we'll actually be back tomorrow. Um, I was originally going to be doing a show on Friday to show off the deflecto storage and how we use them then i realized friday is right before fourth of july and i already know people are leaving for fourth of july stuff today um so i figured i better do them tomorrow so we'll be back tomorrow to just kind of show off the deflecto storage how we use them all that stuff if you sell the color tones let me know please reach out to me so i i might be doing a pre-buy on the color tops and stuff um <laughs> So we will be back tomorrow to show you the deflecto storage, how we use them. I'm obsessed with this deflecto storage. I, um... It's one of my favorite booths. It was. That booth was amazing. They have amazing storage product. They have amazing stuff. Um, so... That's how you brush tips. So, you enabled me. <laughs> oh, she! I did. She got them. Are they amazing? Do you Where like she them? Got? She got the deflecto storage. I'm positive. Uh. She got, I think, the four bin. If I remember right, the, one, two, she got those. The big one. Yeah, I think you got the next four one bit. Five, right? The next one. Maybe she five. got a five, and I think she actually hung hers on her wall. Yeah. Which we need to show off. They, you can hang these on the wall. They're very cool. And this storage is worth money. They connect, don't they? Yep, she hung. Yeah. She hung them. Um. Did she show a picture again? She sent a picture to me. Oh, so awesome. I love the deflecto storage. I think it's well worth the money. And if you can get them on sale at Michael's, it's even worth more. Mm -hmm. We're going to be showing that off tomorrow. So come see. We're going to give you a quick tour of our craft room and how I use it. And then um, some other stuff. So I'm really excited for tomorrow. And there probably won't be a lot of people in here because it's 4th of July weekend. So you get you you get me all to yourself. And Sean. And me. And Sean. Yeah. Well, you'll be recording because we're going to be walking around and stuff. You'll hear me, but you probably won't see me. Yeah. For most of the part. And then just check Friday. There's a big announcement coming from Friday. I can't go into much detail, but I'm very excited about it. I don't even know what it is, or do I? I showed you today. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't tell you, but I'm excited. I told you, like, the six bin, too. Those are pretty cool. The six bin, Jack. I like the... I was watching a little bit of those, how you can use them not just for crafting. You can use it for parties you can use them for baking you can use them in your kitchen you can they're use them. mostly for craft yeah they are but they definitely have i'll be right back uses. i don't know oh i know it's good but yeah they they was great the 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 amazing part is those six bins that have a handle and stuff you can stack those and you can actually buy the roller 
So you can go, they had a stack of like 11 or 10 high. Put them on the roller and they just roll around with no problems and they do not go around. Hi. Come here. That's it. Before we leave, we'll have everyone come say hi. Hi. Come here. You got her? No, you got her. Here. Oh, come here, Maisie. She's almost too heavy for me. Oh, Maisie, Maisie, Maisie. Say hello. Before we leave, I know you guys always like your... Look at those paws. So, if you guys weren't here on Monday, this is my baby, Riles. Say hello, Riley. Hello. And this is her sister, Maisie. Yeah. They are best friends. They are also fighting oh. every five seconds. And she's not potty trained. Maisie is a little camera shy. It's okay. It's okay. I'll turn on this way. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, she's a little potty, or she's a little shy on camera. Yeah, she's not too potty trained because she's an outdoor dog almost all the time. Oh my gosh, time. look at this. Were they adopted? No. We bought them. <laughs> we bought them. We bought well, them we bought at the same one. time. Maisie, you're so... Oh, my gosh. This is all she does all night. It's kissy, kissy, kissy. All right. So, they will we say goodbye. We don't have... Well, we goodbye. have a retriever rescue here, but... They never have dogs. They don't have dogs. They never have dogs. They're always gone. Always gone. Yeah. We didn't buy uh, sisters. What? This one's ours. And Maisie is my best friend. We bought them at the same time. So... Whenever we leave town, I think she needs to go, you know what? So, all right, guys, we will be back tomorrow. I'm going to go let them outside while you stop that. Thanks for joining. Send me your questions. Go see. Thank you. Come on, babies. Let's go potty. Bye. I think I know what I'm doing. If I do this right. Oh, my goodness. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. And I can't get my finish stop. There it goes. Bye. Bye. Bye.